Hi guys and welcome back to Car Focus. Today you join me in a tree. Now I'm not really in a tree obviously, but um, I'm out and about and I'm doing a vlog because I want to show you something. Now you probably remember, I think it was a couple of months ago now, we did a, a video talking about my Focus ST. So as you're all probably aware, I had a Mark II Focus ST which I purchased in, I think it was November last year and tidied it up, got it to a place where I wanted it to be. And then I mentioned in a video recently that I was going to sell it. Now, I said I was gonna sell it and I wanted to get something like a, a Mark 7.5 Golf GTI. So I did put the car up for sale. It went on Auto Trader. it went up for, I think I put it up for 6,700. I just, I was kind of pushing it a little bit. Didn't get much interest. So I went on holiday, I took it off Auto Trader. When I got back from holiday, I went back on Auto Trader and I lowered the price. I think it was like 6,400. Um, I didn't get my, any nibbles either. So in the end, I got bored of waiting because I, I kind of wanted to move the car on. I wanted to get something newer, um, something a bit more suitable now. So I approached the local garage. Now this local garage had an ST for sale recently and, and they sold it quite quickly. So I thought it's worth giving, it a, you know, giving them a shout, seeing if they're interested in buying mine. So I paid 5,000 pound for it. I spent a thousand on it, so if I could get six thousand six thousand for it, I'd be breaking even. I wouldn't make a profit, but you know, hadn't lost any money, so to speak. So took it to the guys there, they looked around the car, they seemed pretty interested. It was you know a bit of kind of haggling, they're offering me five eight for it. I was like, no, I need six. Anyway, in the end, we struck a deal, I took six grand for it, and I sold my Focus ST, and that was about three weeks ago now. And they've already sold it. They had it up for I think they had it up for over seven and a half thousand. And they've already sold it so yeah but they could offer warranty and stuff and i was happy to get six for it so had a bit of fun with it anyway so i sold the st and i paid off my focus rs so i now own my mark ii focus rs i paid off the outstanding loan that i had for that that was all clear and i was ready to kind of start fresh so anyway cut a long story short i've got a new car i've got a new car it's literally just over here and i'm going to show you around it and it's not a golf gti but I think it's actually better than a GTI. It's cheaper than a GTI. It's very similar to a GTI, but it's more powerful than a GTI. And I'll, I'll, I'll move the camera around so you can see it and then we'll flip the camera around and we'll have a look around the car. But there it is. It's a Seat Leon Cupra 300. Let's have a look at it. So here it is guys, my 2018 Seat Leon Cupra 300. This car's finished in mystery blue. It's a five door, which was one of the, uh, the things on my list to fit the criteria. I've got a toddler and I don't want to be messing around with a three door. I think the five door actually looks pretty good. I don't mind five doors now or two. I don't mind them at all now. And they're just far more practical. So we've got 19 inch diamond cut alloy wheels. These are the same size as the RS and these have got continental tires on them. Front tires were actually a bit low when I went to look at the car. So when they did the the health check, they actually replaced the front tyres and stuck some brand new Continental Sport Contact 7s on there, so bonus. Yeah, so have a quick look around the car. It's just your, your standard kind of Seat Leon Mark III styling, just with a few added extras. I've got the air conditioning on, it's really hot. You've got these really cool DRLs, and then we've got LED headlights as well, which are really good in the dark. We've got the Cooper badge there again. Yeah, just a really good looking car, guys. And compared to the Golf GTIs that I was looking at, the Mark 7.5s, this is a bargain. This was about 3,000 pounds cheaper than the equivalent Golf GTI. And I think this is actually the better car. It's faster. It's a little bit different. You know, GTIs are quite, they're quite common. You don't see as many of these on the road, I don't think. But yeah, really happy with my decision. Now inside, it's pretty nice as well. There's not much in terms of quality. Uh, in comparison to the Golf, doesn't give too much away. We've got half Alcantara seats with Cupra branding there. We've got various displays. We've got sport information here, your G meter, oil temperature. It's all customizable as well. There's so much you can change on here. And we've got a digital cockpit as well, which is also an addition to the 7.5 GTI. Six speed DSG, the 290s come with a seven speed DSG now. That was one of the, uh, the changes made to the slightly later 290s. Alcantara door cards, we've got ambient lighting in here at night and you can change all the colors of that. Carbon fiber or faux carbon fiber inserts there as well. Nice steering wheel, lever trim with the Cooper badge as well at the bottom there. Flat bottom, 
so a bit sportier than your norm. We've obviously got dual climate control. We've got winter pack on here as well. So we've got heated seats, headlight washers, parking sensors all around, front and rear. And then in the back, quite nice and spacious, kind of buckety seats in the back there with the Alcantara trim for each seat. Nice big center armrest. And we've got two cup holders there and you can adjust these for the size of the cup. Got a little ski hatch there if you want to stick some skis through there. Yeah. It's quite, you know, quite understated really. It's a bit of a sleeper, because I tell you what guys, this thing is rapid. Now in the boot, decent sized boot. I don't know the exact specifications, but um, yeah, it's more than sufficient for your day-to-day -day needs. It does actually sound quite nice, because this doesn't have a GPF. I, that's another reason why I didn't want a 290, because I didn't want a GPF. I wanted the full 300, and I wanted the, the pops and crackles, and the big old DSG farts as well. So yeah guys, that's a quick whistle stop tour of my new car. Seat Leon Cooper 300, I can't believe I own a Seat. Um, I've been a Ford man for like 19 years. I do still own my Mark II Focus RS, that's staying. But as a daily driver, I am loving this thing. It's just super smooth, it's super easy with the DSG gearbox. It's rapid, it's got Apple CarPlay, cruise control, all the mod cons. I've not had this stuff for a good few years now as I've been dailying old Fords. And I've just been lacking these creature comforts. So I'm really enjoying my time with the car. It's good on fuel as well. It's over 30 miles to the gallon. Um, yeah, it, ju it just does everything really well. And I think long term, it's going to be a really nice usable daily driver. Um, we will do more videos on this. I will do a driving video, talk about its performance, um, what it feels like compared to our old Golf GTI. And yeah, just just what it's like to drive really so it'll be a bit of a review coming up in the future and maybe a few other videos with it as well we'll see what happens but um, yeah in terms of modifications I don't really think I'm going to modify it I might just keep it as it is and enjoy it sort of as say I intended it um, yeah you never know though never say never and all that but at the moment at this moment in time I'm going to keep it as it is so yeah whistle stop tour of my Seat Leon Cooper 300 let us know what you think of it guys it, you know it, like I say for me it was a no-brainer three four grand cheaper than a golf gti quite a bit cheaper than a golf r it's an effect it's effectively a front wheel drive golf r in terms of its power mainly like on par of the golf gti club sport 40 um but yeah anyway guys that is it hope you've enjoyed again let me know what you think of the car in the comments box below and until the next video take care and i shall see you soon